Hey guys, welcome to the one on one in 10, where you get to see your favorite indie artists from around the world one on one in 10 minutes. I'm your host, Ayasha Roperson, and I'm back this week with a new group and band for this week. They are very talented. I love their energy and their youthfulness. I love their music as well. It gives you some piece of, uh, it feels like down home type of piece of pie type of home and joy and love and happiness, something that we, I think we need to get back to when it comes to feeling that vibration of music. Without further ado, I want to introduce to you guys the band Frames. Yay! And we have Nate, and we have Ella, and we have Darcy, right? Yep. Okay, did I pronounce your name wrong? Um, I go by Ellie. Ellie, sorry. I will get right. my name up. Sorry, Ellie. So let's get started and tell me how did you get started in the band and how and who were your musical influences growing up? Who wants to start? I guess I'll tell the story. Okay. Um, so I was a solo artist for two-ish years before we actually started the band. Um wow. I played um like unplugged style uh shows um and then I got the band together one evening uh during rehearsal and I was like what do you guys think about being like an actual band and um uh like picking a name instead of just being my backup band or whatever because I, I felt like since they were putting in so much effort that they deserved to get just as much attention as I was getting um and so yeah that was kind of the birth of the band but. Oh, wow. That's great. So can you tell me what were your musical influences when it came to you forming your band and also forming yourself uh, as this great artist? Anyone can jump in. Nate, go. Ellie. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Ellie, you can... Um, Yes, All right. Um, so I think that some of our influence, like definitely is Beach Bunny. Uh, I think we like to, or like Peach Pit, uh, especially because our last song is definitely based on Peach Pit. Um, but yeah, we try to like get influenced by those bands. So Yeah, I mean, when I listen to your music, it makes me feel like 80, 90-ish type of music, but you have this new uh, flavor to it that makes it very relevant to now, but I could definitely feel the influences when I hear your music. Um, and it just gives me that, you know, 80s, 90s vibe as well. So can you guys tell me what it, has been your struggle? I think we lost Nate, but he'll be back. What have you got, what has, <laughs> what has been your guys' struggle or as artists, as a band? Um, I think a big part of uh, being a, a young band is that people kind of um, uh, go into like your your business experiences or like your business meetings and they just assume that you don't really know what you're talking about, right? Um, especially um, dealing, dealing with a, an industry like the music industry, a lot of it is very serious, it's very cutthroat, um, and there's a lot of people who you know don't have time to deal with people who don't know what they're talking about so I feel like we've gotten kind of brushed aside um a few times for that reason um but in that same vein there have been tons of people who do like us because we are so young I mean our youngest member is 16 years old um so I think there's people that like us for that reason and people that don't really like us for that reason so it's just a, a matter of finding a nice blend between both of those groups where they'll take us seriously, but also still remember that we are pretty young. I love that. I love the fact that um, you're very confident and you know who you are as a person. Cause I think a lot of times when you're a young person and you're in the industry and you're a newbie on the block, people just kind of say, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know anything, but you have this confidence in like, yeah, I do know what I'm talking about. And I do know some things about the industry. And that to me says that that allows people not to take advantage of you or, you know, misuse you or treat you or try to trick you up because people in the industry can be a little grimy and they can be, 
um, you know, do things that is, you know, not in your best interest, but it's good that you have the confidence, you have the good self-esteem and you know what you know about your music and in and, and the business as well, which is refreshing to hear. And I think other young people need to hear that because a lot of times they get into the industry and they don't think that they have a voice and they do. So guys, Nate, I'm gonna ask you a question since you are back online. Can you tell me what has been the group's biggest success stories? Ooh, some of our biggest success stories. Um, I would say starting out from the very beginning, like as soon as we got this band together, um, how quickly we were able to come together and you know, put ourselves out there to the point of driving 12 hours to New York um, just to record an EP to put out for everybody. And I think that was probably one of the biggest successes we've had um, just as a band, as an entirety, is being able to do something that monumental together so early on. Wow, that's great. And that just shows the tenacity and the dedication and loyalty that you have towards the passion of your dream, which is this group. And a lot of times, when, especially when you start off, there's a lot of people who kind of fall off the wayside because they don't have that passion. You know, that's a test because most groups don't last that long, you know, especially when they're as young as you guys are and when they have other options as well. So it's good that this was a this situation was able to bring you guys together and mold you mold you guys together as a group and also bring your passions and love for what y'all really love, which is the music. Now let's talk about the music. Your song Peach Pit, I love that song so much. I play it on Spotify in my house. I know people are like, oh my gosh, who is these young kids singing? But I just love it. It has this like really 80s vibe to me. And you know, I have to have like some almost like some breakfast with Tiffany's when I'm like, I don't know if you ever seen the movie Breakfast with Tiffany, but it gives me that feel. So on Sunday mornings, I'm jamming to that song and making my breakfast. So how did you come up with the concept to the song? And who was the writer? And who's and who who also is lead as well? Because I can't tell who's lead and who's not lead. Sure. Um, so I was the one who wrote that song. Um, I, I had just gotten out of a relationship, which is like, that's how they all start. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had just gotten out of a relationship. I had bought concert tickets for my, my boyfriend at the time. I, I had bought concert tickets for him to go see Peach Pit and I was going to give them to him on his birthday. Um, but he broke up with me before his birthday. <laughs> and so I, I was sitting in my room and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with these concert tickets. Um, because I, I didn't want to go to the concert by myself, mm -hmm. but I also didn't want to like miss out on seeing one of my favorite bands. Um, so I, I had this, uh, the whole Kalis in a peach pit makes me sick that, that hook running through my head mm -hmm. for such a long time. And then after I had finally, you know, sat on the fact that I had been dumped, I, I was like, I'm ready to write a song about this. And in about 10 minutes, I had written the whole thing top to bottom. Wow. And I sent it over to our producer. His name is Wyatt Boyer. He's super talented. Um, and he got us into the studio really fast. And we just kind of vomited out all of these parts um, and, and built it from the ground up. And he, he added so many elements that we had not really... Um, we hadn't really implemented before. Um, and he, I think he really made it. He made the song what it is. That's great. I love it. So tell me where we, where other people can purchase your music. We have some upcoming shows coming up, performances. And tell me what other music you have coming out for the rest of the year as well. So does someone else want to take this or do you want me to take it? Anyone? <laughs> me? Um, you can find all, all of our music on all major streaming platforms like iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Music, everywhere. Um, if you want to stay updated on our whereabouts, you can follow us on Instagram, uh, TikTok, Facebook at Frames the Music. 
Um, you can also visit our website, www.framesmusic.com. Yeah. Um, and you can get a hold of some of our merch there as well. Um, our plan is to uh, build up a little little mini tour this coming fall. Um, dates haven't been set in stone yet for that, but again, just uh, stay updated by following us on all of our social medias. Um, and yeah, I don't think I'm missing I'm excited anything. for you guys. Because I'm looking forward to the little mini tour. Hopefully it'll be somewhere. I'm in New Jersey. But if it's in New York City, which is not that far from me, I'll definitely come out and support. And I'll definitely go to the website to see if I can purchase some paraphernalia for you guys so I can start sporting around or wearing it just around the house and things of that nature. But thank you so much, Brains, for being on our show today. I am so ecstatic. And um, shout out to you guys. You're going to have a great fall season. I just manifested into the universe for you guys. So I'm looking forward to seeing more stuff from Frames. And thank you guys for the one-on-one -on -one and tenors for checking out this episode. Make sure you go to one-on-one -on -one and ten for all of Frames information that you will see at the bottom of the link of this video. And thank you guys again. You never know where we will be at next, next week for a brand new indie artist from around the world. Thank you, Darcy. Thank you, Ellie. And thank you, Nate, again. And have a great week. Continue to stay blessed and continue to shine bright, guys. Take care.